Hello again. Uh, right, today I'm just going to look at KDN Live again uh, as I'm exploring some of its uh, functions and features. And another nice one that it has is rotoscoping. So I'm going to drag these two little videos in here into the uh, project bin. And I'm also going to just proxy them to make life a little easier. Um, and this is basic, very basic rotoscoping that we're going to do here. I'm just going to drag this first one onto the timeline. Um, and I'm going to, as I usually do for these things, just delete the audio by ungrouping the clips. And let's drag another one on here. Uh, and the same thing goes. Let's get rid of that. There we are. I'm going to shrink the track size down a bit here just so it gives us a little more space. And we can go from there. So at the moment, we've got two tracks. I've got one with a dog. Excellent fellow. And another one with me boringly opening a door. Uh, these clips make no sense together, uh, but there you are. So I'm just going to cut them up a bit so we get just this one bit that I want. X is to cut, S is to select. Uh, otherwise, it's these two here. It's a cutting tool, a razor, and arrow to select. Okay, so here we have it. And what I want to do is I just want to have the uh, door opening out of nothing, if you like, in the field. Uh, so first things first, uh, I'm going to right click, add a transition, and choose a fine, which I'm then going to drag to resize to the size of the whole uh, of the door track. There we are. Right, so I'm going to right click, add effect, alpha manipulation, and rotoscoping. And now I can here, I can draw directly on here. So I'm just going to click once, click a second time to form a line, click a third time, click a fourth time, and then I'm going to left uh, right click uh, on the origina original one to form a box. And you can see what it's done is it's cut out everything else uh, from the screen. And actually, th these are, are curved draggers. So now if we start doing this, we can we can make a formation such as that. In this case, however, I'm going to keep it extremely simple, um, largely because I don't know anything. And I'm just going to start with this. So it's going to be a crack, which just will open up. Uh, I'm going to try and get these a little closer together. That really is just a sliver of nothingness. And then, uh, as I suspect the door is going to start to open around here, I'm going to add a keyframe. Now at this point I can drag this out. Oh, it's not ready yet. We need further on. Let's try around here. There you go. So now I'm going to drag the corner to just show some of the door itself tiny bit. I'll drag this up to the top corner to give it the idea of a frame. And leave the bottom roughly as it is. So now at the moment if we go slowly back you can see we need our starting frame to be somewhere around here. So I'm going to pull this all the way in here. Okay, move frame by frame. We can see that we're following the door. Go a bit further. Add another keyframe. Bit there. Bit there. And further still. there and to there. And it pauses for a while on that point as I look around the door frame and then starts to move back at this point here. So I'm going to add another keyframe here. And I'm going to add another 
another one here. Just to see if it works, because it's a fairly fluid movement, or constant movement, if you like. No, but we need to add frames in between, so there you go. So we can see that here we're way out. Same here. The door is actually shutting around here, so make this a sliver. I think at this point we can get away with a fade out. So, right. Excuse the noise. Uh, next, I'm going to. Probably start here, so I'm going to cut this now, so we can just have it appear like that. When the door closes, it's around. Around here, let's do the same thing. Cut this bit away. Oops, I accidentally pressed the wrong button. Drag the affine, resize the affine to the same size as the track itself. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize the whole thing just by changing that. Think about maybe 55, and I'm going to pull it across to here. I'm going back to the rotoscoping, which is actually on the clip itself. I'm going to add a feather width. Just a little bit, just to soften it. So now, uh, what we should have is a slit opening from nothing. Shaky camera movement, and door closing, and then a slit being there. So, going back to the affine, I'm going to add these keyframes again. One at the end, one somewhere around here, and I'm going to go back to the end one and make it opacity zero. Roughly the same at the beginning, opacity zero. And I'm going to add a little guide, just call it AAA, and I'm going to add another guide over here called BBBBB, because the render time is going to be significant. I'm just going to render this tiny bit of the clip so we can see what the end result looks like. So I'm going to render this Rotodog uh, guide zone from AAA to BBBB. I'm keeping it on WebM. WebM at the moment seems to be my default right now. And render file. It already exists because I did a test before. Right, here we go. So 20 seconds or so. Obviously, this is the simplest possible uh, demonstration uh, of rotoscoping. But if you're uh, really dedicated, then obviously you can do all sorts of things in uh, uh, as a replacement for, for chroma key operations, uh, where you can cut around someone's face or someone's head uh, and uh, splice it into something else, or all sorts of things. It seems to be that the possibilities are becoming un uh, unlimited uh, with uh, KDEN Live, which is really good to see. All right, as it's getting to the end, I'm just going to find it. Uh, should be in Documents. Roto Dog. Right, there we are. Let's have a look at it. The end result. Now, obviously, we can see that it's slightly above the grass, but then since the camera is shaky anyway, it doesn't really make much difference. It's only a test. There we go. I hope that helps. Thanks very much.